My name is Blessings Gadema. I'm 13 years old. I am an orphan. I live with my grandmother and my grandfather. My mother left me when I was young. My name is Miss Smile. I am 11 years old. I live with my mother and I am an orphan. I don't know my father and I am only one in my family. Innocent Kamuaz and age 15 years old boy. I am orphan and I live with my grandmother. The biggest situation is that I have lack of course and many more due to poverty. Along with 300 other children, blessings, mercy and innocence are students at Moeta School. My name is Patterson Mujolanga. I'm the founder and the executive director for Mangot Conference Education and Training. It's an institution that started on the crust, that shelter a hunger in 1989 with 10 orphans. It is called Moet in short, and the objective for starting this institution is one, to give quality elementary education to orphans and vulnerable children and also to provide vocational skills training, to provide a uh, settlement of sponsorship to those children who are actually uh, you know, graduating from the primary school. But also to help the orphans and the guardians in living lightly on the planet, living a simple life by using the concept that is known as Pemakacha. And um, from the time this school started with the orphans, we have seen a very tremendous change and a very encouraging progress because from a grassroots shelter, this time around we are saying that we have a full primary school with the 345 children and um, we have about 11 teachers whom we are working with right now. The hardest thing is for me is classroom for the four. Yeah. And now, the question is the center of our set, the kitchen, the dining office, and uh, also a kindergarten center where we have uh, the young children who go to in that place and there's a nursery school. <laughs> Malawi is one of the very poorest countries in the world. The students at Moet face incredibly difficult circumstances every day. The orphans that we have here are really challenged because there are a lot of you know, things that they need for them to stay very well. This area that we are staying is a, uh, an area where there are a lot of mosquitoes. So uh, the children, most of them suffer from malaria. Like, for example, this time around when the rains have just stopped, there are a lot of stagnant water everywhere, and there is a lot of cases of malaria. And uh, we normally register this time around about six or seven children going to the hospital every day. But also the issue of the households where they are coming from. Most of the households are dilapidated. The houses that we need when it's raining, sometimes they don't sleep, they just stand up because it's raining heavily and uh, when it rains very badly sometimes the houses fall down because they're made of mud and thatch with grass but apart from that um, the problem that we have is that many children come to school when they are hungry it's very rare for parents to prepare breakfast lunch and supper because of the minimal resources which they have the food that they eat is really very bad. Uh, bad in the sense that he, it's not nutritious. They just eat, provided they have to, uh, you know, put their, have their bellies filled. Feel. But also the um, clothes, the clothes that they have. Maybe some have only one pair of clothes, they like a uniform. It's these problems that Moet is helping to tackle. Dear my friend, I'm living now. And the train is passing by to take me with my body over the yeah, yeah, to the land of paradise where you will be no surprise, no sorrow, no worry. That's all. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay.
children are happy because we provided them with exercises, we provided them with all writing materials, we provided them with uniform, and we also provided them with gloves. On the part of the vocational skills, the skills that we give to the kids are preparing, uh, tailoring, this is sewing, and uh, welding, and a bit of type of thread. The other thing that we also, also provide is the, the computer. We are happy also to say that when it was, uh, when there was from October last year to February this year, the children were uh, having lunch every day. It was a hungry year where uh, the even the state president declared the government the state of power. Is it nice? Yeah? <laughs> We also have uh, programs like the uh, permaculture and the natural medicine and also aggression and agriculture. On the permaculture and natural medicine, permaculture is that we teach guardians and children to live lightly on earth. It's a holistic design system for creating sustainable, sustainable human environments. Care for the earth, care for the people. And then we also, if you look at more it as it is, there's a school that started on a bare ground, on a very bare ground. But then, because of our practice of permaculture, the place is so green and uh, it's actually an oasis in the desert on its own. And we also encourage them to use the natural medicine which our forefathers, our ancestors were using when they were staying very happily, healthy. So we encourage the children and the Ghanaians to use the local Afghanabo um, natural trees to, for them to get medicine. So far, so good. We are happy to say that we train the Ghanaians and they are able to, to, to do these things in their homes. We have about four fish ponds. We also have an education scheme where children uh, where we grow vegetables and the children practice there as well. And the vegetables we give the children the kitchen and then we also uh, have the uh, vegetables uh, the surplus for sale. We have these hives here and there and we have this and then when the time comes we also have several vegetables for session. This seven days for sponsorship uh, is actually focusing on those children who have finished standard eight. They have passed, they have done well, they have been selected. So when they have been selected, our friends who help us, our friends in England actually sponsor the spirit in the seven days school. Yeah, when they sponsor the children to the seven days school, now it is now our responsibility as Moet to monitor. We monitor the students because we give them the school fees, we give them the uniform, we buy for them, pocket money, we give them uh, writing materials, and uh, we, we also visit the school. Moet is a truly remarkable place. From its humble beginnings as a grass shelter with 10 orphans, under the guidance of Patterson, and through the sheer will and hard work of dedicated teachers, it has grown and blossomed into the very best school that these children could hope for. And that's the key word, hope. For me, that's what stands out above everything else. Despite the hard circumstances and vast challenges that these children face every single day, they have hopes, dreams and aspirations, just like any other child. These students have a hunger to learn and to better themselves through education and Moet is providing them a path to do so, but it needs our help. As has been the case for the past 20 years, the school is always growing. There's always a new project that needs funding. Money is needed to keep on providing the everyday necessities such as clothes, uniforms, exercise books, pens, pencils, food, medicine and mosquito nets. At the moment, sewing machines and computers are in desperate need of fixing too. There's also a nursery kitchen that needs finishing, as well as bigger, more long-term projects. It took us the best part of a day to visit just two secondary schools in the Mangochi area. 
Supporting these secondary school students is a demanding task and ideally the next step for Mowat is to start building a secondary school right here. That's the long term plan. But none of this can be achieved without you. This thing cannot go without saying. I wanted to thank the people that are helping us from all over the world, especially the friends of Margaret Offers Education, former who are in England. They have done a tremendous work. And uh, from the time we started with, working with them, life has been so good with the kids. And uh, we know that it's not easy to, to fundraise. And it's just something that is very difficult. But also apart from that, to also thank those friends of ours who are outside our countries, to encourage them to say, if you have a little something, you know that would be very great. A very little money that people can contribute can accumulate. So some simple projects like those, or big projects like those can come from it. You know, simple contributions, if at all people are very willing to help. For many of you watching this, um, you'll finish watching the video, thank you, but then you'll click on the next thing and that'll be it, which is okay, that, that's normal. Um, but I'm hoping that at least a few of you, by watching this, you feel you, you want to help, and you can. Um, no matter how small or insignificant you think your contribution may be, it's really welcomed and appreciated. So if you want to donate money, you can go to uh, www.fomo.org. I'll put that there. And there is a big donate button that you can click on. Very easy. Um, but maybe, maybe you have an idea for the school or some old, some old clothes that you were going to throw out. Uh, ideally, if you want to come out here and volunteer, you can. It's, it's really easy. Um, so all you need to do is get in touch. So I will put my email address here and also the volunteering coordinator, Kate Bernard, her email here. So if you feel you wanna, you wanna get in touch, come and volunteer or do whatever, just email one of us and we'll get the ball rolling. And also, even if you can't do any of those things, just, just sharing this video on your social media will go a long way, it will help because it spreads the word. And um, maybe by sharing this video, someone else will come across it and they'll be able to help in a different way. So if you could just share, tell your family, tell your friends, that'd be awesome. And thank you for watching. Thank you.